You alrighty there fellow mini painters and lovers of all things old hammer related and welcome to another video from Nostalgia Hammer Hobbies where I'm going to be trying to make this Chaos Dreadnought slightly less Nurgle and a little bit more Slanesh. We're going to start with a typical soak and scrub in the Sonic Cleaner. Then a little bit of an alteration work to the shoulder melts for the weapons to fit a little bit better. And then to complete it, a really nice, bright, vibrant colour scheme. So grab yourself a cuppa, and let's go to the painting desk and have some fun. Before we start painting this one, I'm going to have to do a little bit of alteration work to the joints where the weapon connects on. Because it doesn't quite marry up properly because of a couple of little bits of added detail to the sculpt. So what I've done is I've taken a little bit of one millimetre plastic card and I've stuck it on as you can see from this side to help pad the weapon out from the side a little bit as well as filling in the little hole with some green stuff so it's got a little bit more solid area to glue to and that helps it to just sit in the right place for the weapon once it's all put together. To do this what I've done is I've got some one millimetre plastic card and I've cut them to about 13 millimetre, 14 millimetre squares. Mark them out with a pencil or something, and then I use a old filing uh, needle file to grind out the holes for it. And it's a lot easier to do this whilst it's still actually attached to the main sheet rather than when you've cut them up into small bits. It's quite fiddly to hold on to these tiny little bits when you're trying to do this. And once you've got that done, what I do is I'll get a craft knife and I'll just cut it round on the inside like that, just grinding it round so it helps to clear off some of the flashing and it makes the hole a little bit bigger so it fits over the weapon nub a little bit easier. And then with that, this stuff's really quite easy to cut so I just use a little pair of scissors and you can just cut the squares out with this. I initially started by doing two because the scourge side has two of them but as it turned out, I discovered later on the heavy plasma gun only requires one of these little things, but it's not like it used a lot, so you don't really waste much when you're doing it. And when you pop it on like that, you'll see that it's got a little bit of wiggle room if you made the hole a little bit big like I have. But that doesn't really matter too much, to be honest, because you're going to be gluing it into place. So you're going to get some super glue and just put it where you want the part on, and then get some super glue activator to help it stick on nicely. <laughs> And then once I've got it glued in place, I just take a pair of flush cutters like this and just snip it round a little bit neater. So you're just cutting off the excess like that. Makes it a lot easier to give it a tidy up. And then just work your way around, snipping off these little bits as you go. And then when you've got the rough, most of it snipped off with your flush cutters, you can use either a needle file or sanding sticks, or like I use, where I use a craft knife, and just trim it down and shave it down until it's nice and flush with the actual metal part of the model. And finally to finish off, what I do is I get a little bit of green stuff and smush it together. And I've got a drill bit that's pretty much the right size for it. And it's a good idea if you can mark on there somehow, I've done a little bit of a scratch, on how deep you'd like the hole to end up. Because otherwise if you don't do this you can end up with the bit not really gluing properly. So just mix your green stuff up, splodge it in the hole, and then use the drill bit up to where you've marked it to flatten it off and make sure it's pushed down into it nicely. And when you've done that, it's a good idea to finish it off to actually take the weapon and push it onto your weapon mount and just give it a bit of a wiggle just to make sure there's nothing excess. And if there is, and it just splodges around the sides a little bit, then that might help it stick in place. So just Give that a quick double check. If it looks like there's too much, just clean it away and pick it out. And then with that, as you can see, this weapon is sitting a lot nicer and a lot straighter on the body. And it's not angled in so much. And with the other one put in place, that's uh, looking a lot better. Now we're ready to put some paint on it. This Chaos Dread's being done for a mate of mine. And he's asked for it to have an Emperor's Children themed colour scheme for it. 
So with that in mind, I've decided to go for a purple, going up to a really nice bright one. How I'm going to do this is I'm going to start using an airbrush to apply the purple. Now, what I'm going to be using is a Sparmax SP35C. They're not massively expensive airbrushes. They're about 50, 60 quid, something like that. But when you think how much uh, something like a full set of Artis Opus dry brushes could be, that's not too bad. And I've had this particular one for at least four, maybe five years. No problems with it whatsoever. And the colour I'm first using is Phoenician Purple, which is an airbrush paint. I think it's still available. I think so. I'm not sure, but you can get it on eBay if, not, if it's not available on uh, GW's website. And just build up the coverage of it nice and slowly. Thin the paint down a little bit before you do it. I'll do a video at some point if people would like on uh, how I thin paints down and use them in an airbrush if anybody is interested. What I do is you just slowly work backwards and forwards building up multiple layers of this stuff with an airbrush and you, you don't want to apply it too thickly and get any streaks. The next purple I'm going to go with is going to be Chemos Purple which I'm going to use to cover up pretty much most of the Phoenician purple that I've just put down but not all of it. So we're going to try and work from the center out on the panels. I'll show you here on this uh, shoulder arm here. What you do is you work your way out, just building it up slowly, just like we did with the Phoenician purple to begin with. And don't rush it, don't try and blast it on there, just keep it going and just work it out, build it up in layers as you go. And the good thing is, what you can do with an airbrush is that you can just trigger the air without letting any paint through. And that helps the paint dry an awful lot quicker whilst you're actually doing it. And as you can see, when I put the two shoulders next to each other, the plasma gun on the right hasn't had it done, whereas the scourge on the left has. And you can see a subtle difference between the two shades in purple. And from here, we're going to work on up. Next up, I've gone for Gene Stealer Purple. We can apply this on an even less surface area now, aiming up towards the top corner of things like these um, shoulder pads here. And start building it up a little bit again over multiple layers, just slowly spritzing it on there as you go. And you'll build it up as it goes. Same on the uh, plasma shoulder pad here as well. And build this up going from the top edge of it, working your way down and building it up and working it nice and bright as you go. And for the helmet face part, what I like to do is just work on the front of it, just building it up as you go. And you'll find if you uh, just let it build up nice and slow, it'll build up quite a nice little gradient for you as it goes. And just keep working at it nice and slow until you've built up that nice soft little gradient. And the final colour we're going to apply through the airbrush is going to be Cacophony Purple, which is as bright as we are going with this one. And this is quite a bright colour. And you're just going to work this in from the uppermost corners and just work it down to, oh, I don't know, not barely even halfway. Same on the uh, plasma arm as well. Just work it down from the top over that top part that's visible just over the chain and just build it up as it gets nice and bright. And on the front armour panels here, just aim for, again, the top corner, just in the centre of it, and steadily build it up as you go. When it comes to doing the face, just try and get the very front most parts of it until you've built up quite a nice little gradient. And don't worry that this does look very bright at the moment, because we are going to be knocking this back in a minute. And our final stage for the purple armour is to knock it back with some Megos purple mixed with contrast medium. Quite a heavy mix again, about three parts medium to one part purple. And we're going to apply this not like a wash, not like you would with the contrast paints normally, but like it's a glaze. And we're going to apply this towards the recesses, building it in. And this is going to tone down this really bright purple and make it slightly less virgin on pink.
And then with that, we can move on to doing the rest of the Stregnaw. Once I'd finished the purples off, the next stage I'm going to be doing is the metallics. And to begin this, I was going to start by doing the usual thing, which is base coat everything in black first. But then I just started to think to myself, is this really necessary? You know, I mean, do you have to do your metallics over a black base coat to get a decent coverage in them or not? So with this in mind, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave the metallic areas white first, and then I'm going to go in and do the base coat with lead belcher. Put these on if you want any inspiration on where to do them it's a good idea just to look at some artwork i'm taking one from the uh, second edition chaos codex here to give me a good idea where to do it and the brush i'm going to be using is a gw's synthetic medium shade brush these are actually pretty good for base coating all around and they hold their point pretty well i'm getting some slight curling so far but they are holding up to it quite nicely what i'm going to do is i'm going to be using lead belcher as i said initially to pick out all of the metallic areas. So I'm going to be doing like feet, uh, the engine plant at the back, parts on his scourge and anything like that. And do that. Like I said, I'm just going to look through the artwork and get a good idea of where to place these. And now that they're all down first coat, I mean, this took a couple of coats to get it done, but it's actually got very good coverage. I'm quite pleased with it. It doesn't look like it requires a black to get a good finish out of it, especially for lead belcher. Next up, I'm going to be doing all the bronze areas. For that, I'm going to be using a base coat of Balthazar Gold. And again, just take some reference from the artwork if you need it. There's not very many areas, really. There's a few bits on the power scourge. There's some bits on the power plant. And a bit on his little uh, collar thing around his head. And for the gold, I'm going to be using a different paint other than the GW one. I'm going to be using Vallejo's Liquid Gold. Now, this is an alcohol-based paint. So you do not want to wash your brushes out in water. It won't work. You want to have a little pot, like a little pot lid or something like that, for some isopropyl alcohol somewhere to wash your brush out. Now, I would use an older brush. I don't think it damages the brush, but it's just a good idea to do so. And even though this stuff is very liquidy, it's extremely controllable. I find it very nice to use indeed. So I'm just going to go around, pick out all of the gold trim and some areas on his face and some other little bits like that. And what I've also done is any areas that I wanted silver, like some of the skulls and some of the chains, I've base coated those in Iron Breaker in preparation for them to just to look a little bit brighter. With the gold finished, I hope you can see why I really love this Vallejo's Liquid Gold. It is such a beautiful shade when it's finished, and that only took one coat to get it down. With the gold finished and all the metallics, I was kind of left with a bit of a quandary, and I was quite stuck on what to actually do for the uh, talons and the plasma bar barrel and the little pipes going on his head, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what colour to go. I was originally thinking red, but it just didn't seem to go at all well with the purple. So I turned to the colour wheel. And when I looked on the colour wheel, I could see that opposite the sort of purpley colour that I was trying to use for the actual main colour of the armour was a really bright yellowy green. So I thought, let's go for that. So what I've gone with is a base coat of Caliban green to start with over the talons and the weapon and the uh, plasma gun. Uh, muzzle and I'm then going to apply a layer of Warpstone Glow over that. This takes quite a few coats to get a smooth coat over this one. It took me about six or so goes to get it done. But once it's done, it does a nice smooth coat to it and it looks pretty nice as your base foundation layer. With that down, I then go back to the airbrush and I'm going to use some moot green through the airbrush for this one. Now, some people will say all sorts of things like how to thin your paints down for the airbrush, like the consistency of skimmed milk or something like that. A really good set of videos to watch is anything done by Angel Geraldes. That man is an absolute wizard with an airbrush. 
What I do is, as you can see, I use um, casings from mince pies from over Christmas, minus the mince pie, obviously. And you want to go, I go for about 50-50 mix of airbrush thinner to paint, if I'm using like undiluted paint for it. And the airbrush thinner I use is also thinned down a little bit. And this is the sort of consistency you want to go for when you're doing it. You want to be able to run down the sides of what you're doing. If you, uh, I usually set my air pressure to about 20 PSI, and you get some practice in. It's the same as like um, using a paintbrush, working out consistency of paint for that and brush strokes and everything. So it's just a different way of applying paint. And if you were uh, gradually work it back, you'll start to build up a very nice gradient going from that nice bright yellowy green from the moot green, going back to the darker green that we've got with the warpstone glow over the Caliban green. And when it comes to doing the muzzle of the heavy plasma cannon, just work back from the end, gradually building up as you go to just past halfway, I reckon. At least that's what I've gone for. And as you build it up slowly, but again, don't try and do it in one quick go. It's the same as if you're using a paintbrush, you build it up over layers. And you just keep spritzing it on slowly and building up, and you'll eventually build up really quite a nice gradient. And then after we've done that, we're just going to go back in with our lead belter and tidy up a few of the uh, little details that are on there, like the metal end to the muzzle and the little tiny coolant nodule bits that are in there. But it doesn't create too much mess when you use it, and it's not that hard or time consuming to do so. For the final touch, before we end up doing the washes and everything, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit more wet blending on the hoses going from the Dreadnought's head. We're going to go back to contrast paints for this. We are going to be using Warp Lightning contrast paint as well as Imperial Fist contrast paint. And if you start with the brighter colour first, and I'm going to start with the light yellow just at the top part where I want it, and then I'm going to work it to just past halfway. And then you work in the green, working from the end of where you want it to start, going up and you marry it into the yellow as you go. And then you just work backwards and forwards until you've got your satisfactory little blend on there. And it doesn't take too long. And again, it's not too difficult. And wet blending is definitely one of the things I think contrast paints have been absolutely made for. They work so well for it. And then once we've finished up all of this, that's all the base coats done. We're ready to do washes and then highlights, and we are very nearly there. When I was doing the washes on the metallic areas, I was wondering if I could imitate the old gloss wash range that GW used to do. So with that, I started with the lead belcher areas, and I've taken some null oil and mixed it about 50-50 with some gloss varnish from Windsor & Newton. This stuff's great, it's what I, I use to go through the airbrush and everything. I use the same, the satin varnish and the matte varnish, it's perfect, it's nice and thin. And when I mixed them together, I've just applied them as I normally would. And I just wanted to see if it works the same, so you don't get that dulling down effect on the metallics that you usually get from the GW washes. And I would say, after, on the first pass over there, it's working quite well hasn't dulled it down at all and it's certainly helping to pick out all the details on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow on from here and I'm going to do the gold areas next. So I'm basically doing the same sort of mix but I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade this time mixed with the gloss varnish. And I'm going to put it over all the gold areas like this. And I'm just going to try and aim it towards the recesses to not really slop it on. But the gloss varnish mixed in with it really does seem to remove a lot of the surface tension. So you're not going to get a lot of surface staining with this anyway, at least not from what I've seen. And then for the bronze areas, I'm just doing exactly the same mix again, but with Agrax Earthshade this time. I'm just going to pick out all the bronze areas on here, like any piping, his feet, collars, anything like that. And with all those metallic areas finely washed, I think they've come out quite well. Certainly doesn't appear to have been any dulling down of any of the metallic areas like you quite often get. But I don't think I'm going to have to reapply any of the metallic paints over the uh, washed areas to bring it back. 
So I would say give it a give it a go maybe. Mix your wash in with some gloss varnish. Maybe don't do it quite as diluted as I did. I would go for maybe two parts wash to one part gloss varnish instead. And see how that does. And the final stages to do is the yellow wash over any of the wet blended areas. For that I'm going to use Cassandora Yellow. And you can see that not only have I done the pipes on the Dreadnought's body itself, but I've also done the pipes on the plasma weapon and the plasma coils as well. I'll just do the Cassandora Yellow over all of that. And I think there aren't really any other areas that need wash on here. And if you've done any skulls or anything else like that, do them with Agrax Earthshade normally. And with just highlights to go, this thing is very nearly finished. And finally, we have reached the highlighting stage. To start off with the highlighting, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a dry brush over all of the lead belcher areas with Iron Breaker. I'm going to do all of the Balthazar Gold with Rune Lord Brass. And it's all of the feet, exhaust pipe areas, anything like that, anything that's brass that's got that brassy colour to it. And just go around and pick all of those out with a nice edge highlight on this one with the paintbrush. As well as the collar going around his head. That's quite nice and easy as well. Just pick out the very edges on that one as you work around by turning the model on to an angle slightly and working the brush around the edge of it. And then for any of the silver chains and skulls that are there, I'm going to use some Rune Fang Steel. You can just overbrush the trains, which is kind of like dry brushing, but with a little bit more paint on your brush and more controlled. And for the skulls, just pick out any of the raised areas and try and leave some darker detailing in there. And then the final stage in the metallics highlights is going to be the gold. And for that, I'm going to use Liberator Gold. And I'm just going to go around all of the very edges of all of the gold trim and just pick that out nice and carefully. Try and turn the model onto it, set onto an angle again so you can run the brush along the edge of it to get a nice and sharp and edge highlight as you possibly manage. And then I move on to doing all of the green areas. So for that, I'm going to use Gauss Blaster Green to begin with and pick out the very edges of things like the talons and the muzzle of the plasma gun. And just work around again. If you turn the model on its side, you can get some really nice thin edge highlights on this. And what I'm doing is I'm going to work the Gauss Blaster Green to just where the transition happens between the lighter green and the darker green on the muzzle here. I'm then going to use some Moot Green to highlight the darkest edge on the plasma gun barrel and the same on the claws on the power scourge. Just that little darker area there on there. Just highlight that with some moot green and then I'm going to do the piping just underneath the plasma gun here which I did mention earlier so what I did was I started out with a base coat of Caliban green and then built that up to warp stone glow over it just leaving in the Caliban green in the darker areas then I moved up to using moot green to pick out just the top half almost of these coils here to give the illusion of a glowing effect And then to finish these off, I moved up to Gauss Blaster Green again and just used a tiny little dot of it just at the top of it to give that hint of brightness. And then we get to the purple armour. And for that, I'm going to use Decala Lilac. And I'm just going to pick out the very edges of that. And then for the inner edges of the arm panels like that, just try and pick out the little corners and see if do it as carefully as you can and try and do it on, pick out the darker recesses left in there. And then for the wet blending part, over the green, what I'm going to use is some Gauss Blaster Green again. And just pick that out and work up until it gets to the yellow. And then for the yellow, what I'm going to be using is Dawn Yellow. And go as bright as I can and just pick out the very little tiny edges on those cablings as well as on the plasma gun with this. And then I thought I'd show you this little bit here, just on the two lenses that I've done. I've done one set of lenses blue with a Cantor blue base, and then you pick out the very edges of that 
with Lothurn blue, just a little tiny line just around the edge of it and a little dot just on the top of it, with a little highlight of white scar just to finish that off. And then for the green lenses, what I've done is I've done a base of Caliban green with a little glaze of warpstone glow over that. And then I've worked up to doing the line of nude green just around the bottom part of the lens like that and then a little dot on the top. And finishing that off with a little dot of white just on the top part and a little tiny dot down the bottom just to add that hint of shine. And with those final highlights applied, that's this second edition Chaos Dreadnought looking less noble and more slanesh. If you've enjoyed it, consider hitting subscribe and pressing the bell icon to come along for more content in the future, because there's going to be a lot more Chaos stuff to come. Also, in the description below there will be a link to my commission painting website. If you would like a commission doing anything from Old Hammer to New Hammer or any models in between, just go to that website and I'll be happy to do a quote for you. And so with that, Let's go to the final grand reveal and see how this beautiful thing has actually ended up. And here finally is the completed Emperor's Children's Dreadnought. The purple is looking absolutely brilliant, really bright and vibrant. And I really do like the way the green highlights off the Power Scourge and the Plasma Gun are playing off that purple. The base, if anybody is interested, is a 60mm square MDF base that I got from eBay. It really wasn't very expensive. I think I ended up with about 40 of them for about six, seven quid or something. It's not too bad. And the decal on his left hand shoulder pad is from the old Chaos decal sheet. It's one of the Emperor's Children's one. And so with that, I hope everyone has been uh, pleasantly entertained with this video. And if so, I can, uh, I'm very happy to say there's going to be a lot of upcoming extra Emperor's Children videos. Because I'm going to be doing an entire army of them. So thank you very much for watching, stay smiling, and keep the old hammer alive.